Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here on the ground here at the VM Village live in Las Vegas at VMworld 2017. People buzzing around us here on the ground floor in the hang space. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Craig Nunez, Chief VP of Marketing at Datrium, and Andre Leboici. 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 VP <laughs> Solutions and Alliances at Datrium. Welcome to theCUBE, great to see you. Thank you. I've been looking forward to this since I arrived in Vegas. <laughs> man. So you guys are the hottest startup right now um, that on the on the track in Silicon Valley. A lot of a lot of people talking about you guys. So I want to get this out there. Give you a minute to just talk a little bit about Datrium. You guys are a, a new model emerging with some real pros. Data domain. Everyone knows the success of that. Yeah. Frank Slootman, yeah. that went that way. You guys have a great team of ex VMware guys. Yeah. So you're working on a really compelling, unique thing, but it's getting traction. So give a minute yeah. to explain what Datrium is. In uh, in simple terms, we are we've, we're a very different take on convergence. We, we're converging uh, VMware and Linux virtualization, even bare metal container uh, hosts, with your primary storage, we leverage host flash for that, with secondary storage and archive to cloud, all in one super simple system. And I mean, what a lot of our customers kind of tell us is, wow, you are a, simpler, more scalable kind of Nutanix that meets rubric. You're like this love child of Nutanix and rubric. <laughs> they just love it, because it's mean, one thing that does it all. Mm -hmm. Super simple. There's a lot of free love going around this generation. <laughs> you got AWS and VMware <laughs> bonding together. Google's <laughs> playing in here. It's, it's, it's like the, the 60s, 60s all over tech. again. It's yeah, the, yeah. It's the Not that I remember. Tech hippie generation. Love Summer of love, love child 2017. Of Summer of love. <laughs> I, that, I'm going to use that. I will do Okay, that. so love child between rubric and Nutanix. What specifically does that look like? Just clarify one from a product perspective. So so, um, first of all, there is uh, absolutely zero, um, call it HCI cluster administration. And so, uh, you know, growing is as simple as, you know, adding a, adding a server, adding, adding capacity. You add those independently as you need it, so it's super economic. Everything runs fast, because it runs right out of flash in your server, adjacent to your VM. And, uh, and again, no, no backup silo, you take care of all of your protection and archiving to the cloud with the same console that you're running your business on. So it's, uh, that's, in a nutshell, what you get. So contrast that, Andre, with the classical hyper-converged infrastructure in terms of how it scales and how it's managed. Yeah, no, that's a good question. So if you think about hyperconvergence, and by the way, it was great. It really changed the data center in many ways. It simplified, removed the uh, no silos that SAN was creating and the complexity around uh, scalability or, or configuring RAID, LAN zoning, all the things that need specialized skill to manage, right? And uh, as you know, as you move along in your journey in the data center, you end up with multiple different vendors, they have different skill sets to manage. So HCI really changed the game in that ways, but it also created different challenges for uh, for the data center. And uh, we, we are lucky enough that HCI is only starting, right? This whole thing about convergence is only getting started. So uh, the problem, one of the first problems that we address is being able to scale, perform, scale performance independent of capacity. So we've hyperconverged for the most part. You know, if you want more capacity, you need to have compute. If you need more compute, you need to have capacity. Um, so we enable you customers to go in different directions as needed. Um, we also enable customers to bring their own existing environment into the solution. With HCI, generally speaking, you need to buy that specific appliance or that specific HCL and sort of like port everything into that specific solution, which kind of becomes a silo as well. So we enable companies to leverage their existing environments and get the same benefits that you would get from a performance perspective that HCI is bringing, data locality and read local read IOs with SSDs and VMEs, but at the same time uh, with your existing hardware and allows you to you know, use whatever you want. Um, there are other benefits on the res resiliency side as well, uh, primary and secondary backups, so all the primary data um, lives in the nodes, uh, in the servers, but we have the copy of the data, or the backup, in what we call a data cluster. So, what that 
really makes is the solution is stateless on the server side. I don't know if you remember, in the same time frame, all the servers were stateless. If a server went down, you would just you know, move, restart the VMs or the workload in a different server and it creates. Uh, with hyperconvergence, now it's always stateful. All the data is actually living on the server. So when you lose a server, you're actually putting data at risk. And to be cost effective, with HCI, you need to do what they call uh, FTT1 or replication factor two. It means like two copies of the data across the cluster. But it's not very uncommon to have a disk failure and a read error, and then you're down to backup and have to restore. You want to rely on the backups as your insurance, not, not as your not as your as is, <laughs> you know, we use it for a day to day. Yeah. Um, so there are a number of different things that we saw, we believe we solve and we solve well um, that hyperconvergence was not able to solve in its first instance. But you know what, that said, hyperconvergence is starting, this whole journey into convergence is starting. I think I saw Chad Sackett saying there's 450,000 VNX out there. Um, those are all coming for, you know, for renewal, for re you know, refresh cycles. Um, and now customers, they have the ability to see what HCI was doing the past three, four years, and what worked and what was not working well and look at the new solutions and see how we are addressing those challenges. Okay, well what about the data protection side? You guys obviously have, with, with, you know, with Brian and Hugo, a lot of experience as a, as a, 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 a target, yeah. you know? Yeah. But you're talking about more, you're talking about a, a yeah, software I mean, platform. Yeah, from, from a data protection perspective, first of all, you've got uh, a platform that's you know, totally unified with your primary storage environment. You then have uh, you know this wonderful granularity at you know VM and VDIS level, container level, um, great scale. I mean, again, the chops that the founders bring to that. But one of the things that you know I think is you know really powerful. A lot of um, other platforms will talk about, hey, we can we can snap VMs, we can replicate, but then they will store them on expensive flash in those nodes, and we have a separate device that is, uh, you know, cost optimized, globally deduped, compressed on very low cost capacity. That is ideal for all the all that capacity you need to keep to protect the business, and so bringing that together with you know the great performance of Flash, this thing really. Uh, does it all end to end. And so um, it's, it's um, a, a different way to think about it and we, when we go in, we're typically solving problems on the you know, compute primary storage side. Uh -huh. But uh, when we then describe you know, what we do from a backup or archive to cloud perspective, the lights go on, oh my gosh, I, I simply yeah, don't I need to do all one, this I got a two stuff. for one here. But yes, but exactly. So in your file system, basically you're saying eliminates the need for any separate backup software, is that right? Or? We do, uh, I would say, 80 or 90% of what most people need because the convenience of having your virtualization engineer do it all is so good. Now, what I would say is, there are a lot of requirements in the world um, that we absolutely are going to turn to our pals at Zerto for in uh, cool replication, uh, our friends at Veeam, uh, Rubrik or Cohesity, all of those guys will team up with because if you want you know, backup off platform, you know, we're, we're daydream to daydream, you know. Yeah, right. We're not going to uh, yeah, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, sugarcoat that. But uh, if there are specific requirements that those guys do that you need, we're going to give them a ring and bring them in. But what we're finding is most, most of our customers are, are looking for ways to just do it all in one spot with, with yeah. the guy running the business. So it's all right, so a, I want to back up or something. Yeah. We had Brian's founder on on Monday, on Monday. And this is interesting, so I want you to take a minute to describe why you're doing this. Because a lot of people, you come in, okay, primary storage compute, and then that's how I used to operate, and then the next guy comes in with his solution. You guys have an interesting perspective. With the data domain backup side, what is the, why are you guys taking this approach? Explain the uniqueness of why you guys are uh, engaging in this way, and, and what does it mean for the person, the customer at the other end? Yeah. Is it all in one? Is it optional? I mean, the approach is unique because of the founders. Yeah. Just yeah. take a minute to explain here's, that. Here's the world. The world is hard and getting harder, right? I mean, it's just a, uh, you know, 
morning, noon, night, and weekend job to keep businesses running with the pace of this economy we're in, right? The and buyers are pulling their hair and, out, and, basically. And, and the, um, exactly, the, and so the winner uh, in, in the market is the one who can bring the simplest approach that gets the job done. And the problem is the, the bolt-on piecemeal solutions that you know, folks are tasked to live with, if you sit down and just draw all of the software stacks and consoles that you need to put together to, you know, to go from your virtualization environment, flash, your backup environment, replication, DR, security, it, it, you want to blow Give your brains out. <laughs> Give me a rope. Give me a rope while we hang it from the rafters. And again, guys are trying to uh, get the job done. They've forced to move fast. They're tight on budget. And so if you can bring them the simplest possible solution that you know, solves the problem today and future proofs it going forward, yeah. that's what folks are looking for. Yeah. And uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of you know, nuanced edges to a lot of different solutions out there, but at the end of the day, show me simple and that wins. All right, so now give me the reactions. That's important to buyers to understand the com the, what Daytream is. Thank you very much for that. Now the reaction. So you walk into that buyer and you say, hey, don't blow your brains out, don't hang from the rafters, we got you here. This is, thing, this is beautiful for you, simple works, cleans those lines up. What do they react, are they skeptical? They say you're full of you know what? Do they test the, the hell out of it? What, it is, what, what goes on next? When you walk them through it, and I'm going to let you take this too, you've talked to a ton of people already. Um, when you walk them through it, the, you know, they totally get it. Where should flash be? Right next to the VM on the host. Makes perfect sense, it's cheaper there, right? Um, how should you scale? Well, stateless hosts, you know, servers that aren't storage nodes. You know, you lose two and you're clustered down. That's no not problem. a great yeah. situation, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, stateless hosts. Any number of servers can fail, you're still going. People love that, they get that. Mm -hmm. um, bringing all of the backup capability into that one console. It, you know, if you've got the, if you've got it, people get it. And by the way, a quick demo, is, you know, is kind of icing on the cake. But I mean, yeah, well, no, share, I think share some color. I want to get yeah, no, customers. Of Monroe, I've been traveling the last few weeks and talking to customers. Um, I joined Daytrim what, four months ago or so, um, and customers understand the proposition and they like. They like that uh, we bring performance. They like that we bring resiliency. They like that they can reutilize the existing investments in the data center. Um, over, and they like that we do primary and secondary backup. Um, they, they, the customers that we're talking to, they get it, and they understand, and they want to do PLCs and, and move on. And so, so you're talking about a lot of VNXs out there, 400,000 plus. Obviously, that's, a, that's been a target for hyperconverged, right. clearly a target for you guys, but you're also talking about stateless. And you, you think about these emerging cloud native apps, these state yeah. apps, right. the stateless apps, Certain, certain IoT apps yeah. that are being developed. Mm -hmm. Do you see the emergence within your customer base yet of those type of emerging applications that aren't stateful? A absolutely, I mean, well, f first of all, if you, kind, if you look at the public cloud world and architecturally what uh, those guys have had to do to kind of get latency low and scalable, they, you know, think EC2 and S3. You know, think of how you know Google Cloud is architected uh, with Colossus. They have separated that persistent capacity from uh, what's going on on uh, uh, effectively on the the nodes, the compute nodes, uh, and they've done that for you know exactly that reason to scale low latency workloads um, as you need, as you grow on demand. Um, the uh, and to make that infrastructure invisible to the developer. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And so the, uh, you know, the approach we're taking is fundamentally to give uh, customers in, in kind of this hybrid world a you know, way to bring that kind of infrastructure uh, with the simplicity, scale, performance you need, kind of on-prem. Yeah. And then it's a wonderful map when you take that you know, in a hybrid way to public cloud, because you can very easily map that capacity layer to capacity layer, compute to compute, instead of this you know, kind of uh, you know, crazy dance yeah. you have to do with traditional That, that was actually part of it. If you look at a VMware and you know, the, the keynotes and embracing DevOps and containers, it's, it's all over the place. Now, now we're counting the days for you know, how many storage engineers or infrastructure engineers we actually need in the data center moving forward. But um, 
the way the system this, that we sell was architected was always in mind uh, to support you know, bare metal containers and provide all the performance benefits and really providing a way to run containers and native apps, uh, cloud native apps across data centers, across clouds. Um, and we're moving in that direction more and more to support you know, uh, Kubernetes integrated and a few other so orchestration solutions. So I want to follow up on that. I mean, everybody talks about cloud. We're at the show, it's cloud, 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 and it's you know, obviously the big wave. But the Parlin, you know this well, John, being at all the time you spent with you know, AWS and reInvent and Jassy and so forth, mm -hmm. the parlance of cloud is not VMs. Right. Right, and so is the conversation beginning to change in, in your customer base around more of a developer mindset, and what is that conversation like? Uh, for the customers that I've been talking, they still are very VM-centric. Mm -hmm. um, there are some, obviously some discussions about uh, containers and developing, uh, developers embracing containers uh, off-prem, on, on the cloud, and on-premise. Uh, but I know VM is still pervasive in the, in the, in the enterprise. So that's know. where the money is. <laughs> That's where the money is, at least for the well, large so majority of the ops are right now on premise. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so cloud is just a different vernacular. True, but, but, but the well, the reality is though, folks have you know they've got a VM environment. A lot of people we talk to are you know they have nascent container development work going on. Right, and the the challenge is though that uh, those kinds of customers wind up having to silo out the infrastructure that supports those because they just okay. don't have the bridge. And with you, and, you're and saying. And the point is, yeah, you can, yeah. you can have your ESX uh, VMs, your Linux VMs, your, bare, your containers running in those VMs or you can have those containers running bare metal. Yeah. And it's all one shared pool of resources like it ought to be. And, um, and, to, and to some extent when I talk to customers, what I figured out is that they all starting with containers running in VMs, but as soon as they figured out their framework, their management, their orchestration, they want to move to bare metal, because they wanted to harvest that additional 10, 15% performance uh, that they get running bare metal. Um, and that I see constantly in talking to Docker and a few other companies out there, that's what they see on their customer base yeah, as well. Yeah. So, you know, where the, all that is going, uh, I don't believe everything is going to be running in the cloud. I don't believe everything is going to be running in the data center. There will be a mix of everything. You talk to customers, they have different hypervisors. They have Red, Red Hat virtualization, they have VMware, they have Hyper-V, and large customers are embracing everything to some extent. Yeah, yeah. and you want to set it up in a way that you know, you set your policies and you don't care where it is, right? You set it up in an economical way that is aligned with your service levels and who cares if it's a, you know, a different on-prem site, the cloud, which cloud, it doesn't matter, it's all your cloud, one cloud, right? Guys, thanks for coming on, Andre Libovici. Yeah. Got it, right? <laughs> Thank you. Greg Nunez, good friend. Um, congratulations on the startup. Quick thanks, uh, plug, I want to give you the last word here. Talk about the company status, what you guys are hiring for, where you guys are in the startup journey, obviously great validation with multiple rounds of funding. Um, how many employees? Yeah. How much revenue are you doing? How much <laughs> does the product cost? <laughs> yeah, gross margin by product. <laughs> yeah, we are, uh, we are growing rapidly, 130% uh, quarter over quarter. We are hiring literally across the board. Um, we can't hire fast enough to keep up with the demand. Um, and uh, for us, the you know the number one goal is just getting in front of uh, you know customers who are looking for you know a way out from uh, so some salespeople. You get some field organization uh, channel. Yeah, uh, channel. We have oh. a wonderful channel network, and uh, absolutely hiring uh, you know guys to to partner up with our channel, um, both sales and marketing. Um, and uh, yeah, we just. All right, I'll put you both the guys on the spot because we love big fan of startups, certainly ones that have great pedigree and products that's unique. Again, like Nutanix in the early days, no one understood it. Founders had stayed on the course. You guys are on a similar track where it doesn't look like everything else, but it's game changing. So each of you take a minute to explain to the buyer, potential customer out there, why, what is, why they should work at Datrium and what you can bring to the table. We'll start with you. So first of all, if you are on uh, array-based infrastructure now and you're dealing with your, you know, the, the performance constraints and managing LUNs, you've, you've looked at a modern approach to convergence that it, and it just doesn't scale, it's not right for your infrastructure. An enterprise or service provider has to take a look at this new 
approach to convergence we've got, it will change your world, literally. Your business and your personal world. Um, and uh, if, if you don't take a look, it, you're missing out. It is different from hyperconvergence, um, but fundamentally brings you that wonderful x86 based infrastructure that the whole planet is moving to. Got to take a look. Hey, Andre, you can't say the same thing he said, but yeah, in your yeah, own yeah. words, what would you say <laughs> to the potential buyers that are out there, potential customers that would, should look, why should they look at you guys? Sure, uh, uh, I'll let you on on the HCI and the simplification of the data center. Now HCI was great, simplifying data center, removing a lot of the complexity. Uh, we do the same things, we do in a different way. Uh, you know, we remove like all the knobs and, and buttons that you have in the data center. As an example, our infrastructure doesn't require any tuning on performance, on enable this deduplication, enable compression, disable erasure coding, all those features that people, you know when you're managing hundreds or thousands of VMs, there's no way you know what needs to be enabled and disabled for each one of your workloads. So we latch on simplicity, uh, and that's where ma made HCI big, it's simplicity. And uh, we do the same thing, but we now solve different challenges that HCI also brought into the market. And the, the hey, Datrium startup, hot startup, it's Silicon Valley and all around the world, congratulations. It's theCUBE coverage here at VMworld 2017. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break. <laughs>